All right, guys and gals on YouTube, this is a uh, second round of plants through the uh, Cracky seed starting system. I got some stuff I want to talk about today. It's going to actually be one of three videos I'm going to be doing today. I'm going to do a video here, uh, then I'm going to go out in my garage and do a video of the, uh, the indoor vertical farm, which is now done, um, though it doesn't have plants anywhere except the starting uh, area. And uh, then we're going to go out to the garden, and I'm going to show you some plants that actually were started here that are now growing outside under uh, low tunnels um, in one of my garden beds. So let's start out with this. Um, I did an experiment and I did something you're not supposed to do. The first three grids. So each, each thing has two grids. So one, two, three, uh, from this side over and down, we have the strength that you should have for starting seedlings from this side and up. We're more at a strength you would have for growing. And it, as I'm learning more, I would say for growing plants, like peppers and tomatoes, because I, I am coming to the conclusion I don't really think you need um, a stronger solution to grow lettuces and things like that that are, you know, 30-day or 40-day crops or less. Uh, we'll see how that works out. I just wanted to see, like, what would happen, because I hear all of this, you know, horrors of burning young roots or whatever, and like, well, does it happen? The other thing I'm experimenting with is I had really good results starting tomatoes in this system. Um, and so I have no qualms with starting my tomatoes this year here. I was wondering how peppers would do. And I've got mixed results so far. And we'll see where it goes from there. Additionally, one of the mistakes I made is I fiddled with the timer. And I didn't realize uh, during the kind of the interim, there was a few days where there was nothing in here. I actually dropped the time on the timer from uh, running an 18-6 cycle, which is pretty intense, which was getting me a phenomenal growth. Uh, and I dropped it down to like 12-12. Why I did that, I don't even remember doing it. But when I looked at the timer, I came up here and like, I'm like, the light should be on. Did the timer get out of whack? And a bunch of the little pegs were pulled up. So I don't know why I did that. I, who knows? Uh, maybe I was fiddling with something, thinking about something, and uh, just forgot in between. It, it does happen. So I wanted to talk about a few things. Number one, I did set this up as a seed starting system. Okay, so this will do 120 plants. And it will grow them fairly large. You can see the only thing in here from the last batch is this white celery because it took longer. Um, but that's a pretty good size plant for setting out. It's probably ready to go. And, and it still has a few more inches that it could put on. So unlike a lot of like little flats when you're in like six, six packs or something like that, you can get a lot of growth before you transplant out of here. Uh, and you can transplant into an outdoor or a separate hydroponic system. And a lot of this is probably gonna go to the vertical farm. You can transplant to an aquaponic system or you can transplant in the soil, that's nice. But what if you just wanna grow greens inside? Would this type of a system work for you? Yes, it would because I'll tell you what, if you just take out about every other one and instead of running 15, you run about seven and seven. Remember, I'm using aluminum pans and I don't think that's the best solution. It's what I had, I'll talk about more about that in a second. Um, so there's each one of these is a separate pan of solution. I have some other ideas about that. The big issue was finding something shallow enough in this rack to leave room here between the lights and what have you for growth. Uh, this was the, the, the best case scenario that I, stuff I had on hand. And, uh, you know, otherwise you're looking for something that fits this whole tray, this whole rack and is equally shallow. But if you find something like that, we have more space. So maybe you could do, you know, 18 to a level. That's a lot of salad greens. I mean, that's a ton of salad greens. This is basil, by the way, right here. Looking pretty good after uh, seven days. Anyway, um, so without changing anything, just changing the number of holes that you, uh, you put in a board, even this one, you could just, you know, the problem if you just pop out the ones you don't want to use you're gonna have a lot more algae issues because light is able to get through those holes down into your solution. So uh, I would probably make another board. I actually have a different material for making these boards out of. Uh, it's in the outdoor system. I'll show you that when we get out there uh, in a later video today. Um, here's some things that are going on. Number one, this, and remember, this is where the nutrient solution is exactly where it's supposed to be. These four rows are all peppers. These are jalapenos. Uh, those are more, uh, Cuminelle, the back are Marconi. You can see in the back, I've got one that has germinated. The Cuminelles, I have three of three germinated. Uh, the, uh, um, the anchos, these are anchos, I have one of three. And these are Tam jalapenos. 
and I've got zero germinated at seven days. Looking down into there, I would say that one has a seed. I really can't tell with that one. One has a seed germinating right now. Um, it is only seven days. Sometimes peppers take longer than that. But I have found some things you just drop seeds in and you just get great germination. You know, and we'll talk about some of the other stuff. And some stuff just doesn't seem to like to germinate this way. Um, here's an example. These are spinach plants. In my last go, I had almost 20 spinach plants in different areas throughout the system. One germinated and it wasn't very happy. You can see here, I've got three here, 100% germination. And yeah, way in the back there, those three spinach plants. I planted six, I got six of six. How'd I do that? I took these, I put the seeds on a wet paper towel, put it in a Ziploc bag, put the Ziploc bag on top of my cable box for about two days, and then took all the ones with rootlets and put them in. And that seemed to work a lot better. Somebody escaped and got in there. We'll eat him, we'll see what he is. I'd say that's sorrel, which makes sense because that's sorrel back there. That's red vein sorrel. Uh, it seems to really like being in this system. And there's your proper strength for seedlings. And right there is your over strength for seedlings, and it doesn't seem to care. Uh, I would expect red vein sorrel to do beautiful in a system like this because it's a semi-aquatic plant. So other than the peppers, the only things that I've had issues with germinating, believe it or not, is parsley, coriander, and as I said, spinach. Uh, and I'm going to be playing with some other ways to do some germination. My hope with this system was to be able to create something that was so bulletproof that everything was almost exactly done the same way so what i'll end up with is a list of things because i've got i mean you want to see i am playing some games here with seeds all right um i am just throwing you know three 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 here's my cut sheet as i go through these and seeing well what varieties what plants what can you just throw in here and do nothing with so we'll know that um I have another solution coming on seed starting called a Biodome from Parks. Oki, jo Oki Jones, I think is his name, or Oki James on my blog has commented and helped me a lot with hydro. And that's what he's using for most of at least germination. So that might actually end up going with the vertical farm, depending on how it works. And what he tells me is the plugs for it cost less than the rapid rooters. They work just fine and they fit in a two inch net cup uh, just fine. So we'll, we'll, we'll see how that plays out as well. Um, but my big takeaway from this is it works like crazy. And these racks are $30. These lights, you get six of these lights for 60 bucks. These things are so cheap, I don't even know how much they cost. These foam boards are $6.99 a piece. If you were to get even just two, you could run, you know, two shelves and you could grow easily 20 odd, 30 odd plants for food purpose. You can see some of the stuff that does really good, really fast. Like that's arugula. That's arugula. It's six, seven days, seven days. Most of the lettuces do really good, really quickly. And that's purple, purple bok choy. There's some Swiss char back there, uh, some more basil. Um, and I'll give you guys a video here in another week. It takes a while for these guys. You know, it takes a couple of days just to even germinate. It It's the second week where the phenomenal growth rate of hydroponics really really takes off so anyway uh stay tuned we'll get you another video here today on the outdoor system and talk about some of the things i've learned from this system that's gone out to be part of that system